Wistable Bay East India Pale Ale. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. The sun is over the yard arm and that means it's time for a beer. And I've got a beer, a local beer, from the Whistable Brewing Company, or Whistable Brewery if you like. These are quite interesting, I'll get onto them in a minute. Uh, this is uh, an East India Pale Ale. Ever heard of it? Probably not. It's a bit of a, an anomaly, if you like, but they've got that category um, in a few ranges of beer. I know the Brooklyn Brewery do an East India Pale Ale too. I imagine it tastes a hell of a lot different to that. But originally, the East India Company were the ones who asked for Pale Ale to be shipped to India. That's what they did, the East India Company. If you've never heard of the East India Company before, look them up they were a huge and when i say huge i mean absolutely massive export company that shipped goods from the united kingdom all over the british empire and they were so big they had their own army that's how big they were but they were instrumental in getting the beer over to india and there's a lot of Shall I go into it now? Yeah, I'll quickly, I'll quickly cover it. There's a lot of controversy around how India Pale Ale first started. Some people say it was sent to India because, um, sorry, it was, it was brewed as it was to survive the journey to India, you know, packed full of hops, high alcohol, matured in the barrels, which would, it took six, anything between six weeks and six months to get to India. Uh, the other, sort of school of thought on that is people just like the taste of hops in beer. The fact that hops are a preservative was an added bonus. Now, I'm still in two minds which one to believe. There's evidence to say both because beer was being exported to India and it was turning up in shit state. So they sort of worked out that hops could preserve it and, you know, believe what you will, but when they found out it, it was a preservative, they started brewing hoppy, much hoppier beer so it would last longer, etc. I should really research this and do just a feature on India Pale Ale because it is a fascinating subject on that one style of beer alone. You know, But I'm not gonna go into it here. Let's get back to this beer. As I say, this is the Whitsball um, Brewery. They are a subsidiary or the official brewery it's quite well known around these parts, you may not have heard of it, but the Whitstable Oyster Company, there is a restaurant in Whitstable Bay, seafood restaurant, it's world renowned. They have some absolutely fantastic stuff. Apparently, I've been outside there, never gone in, the missus doesn't like seafood. I must admit, I'm not a massive fan of seafood and fish. I don't mind it, I'll eat it if I have to, but apparently this is amazing. But I've not been in there, so, yeah, that's one maybe for when I'm on my Todd. But the uh, the brewery is a subsidiary of that. They brew their own beer. They use um, local ingredients and they use world ingredients as well. So, for example, they use Kentish hops, but they also use hops from all over the world, which is, you know, that's what you'd expect if they're a good brewery. They shouldn't be just be tied to one region. But never tried anything from them before. This is the first time. So let's get it investigated. Now this lot, this uh, Whistable Brewery, have been going since 2003. So they're relatively new, they're independent, so they should be reasonably good. The only thing is, I've got a criticism of them, their website doesn't give much information about the beer. There's no brew sheet, there's not much 
information. What you see on the bottle is what's on the website. Bit lazy, I think, but there you go anyway. Uh, it's 4.1%, it's 500 mil bottle. East India Pale Ale. Uh, East India Pale Ale's vibrant yet well-balanced hop flavors leave the palate with an, uh, an assertive finish and painst a painstakingly blend, painstakingly chosen blend of aromatic hops complements the best British pale malt to give both its citrus floral aroma and glorious golden hue. This multi-award winning India Pale Ale is the perfect choice for all weathers. Hmm. Okay, this is cold, it's just come out of the fridge, uh, Whistable Bay, uh, Whistable Brewery, Little Tepitz Farm, Woodcock Lane, Grafty Green. I've heard of Grafty Green, I've been on, <laughs> been on my bike. I've seen signs for it, Grafty Green, and I thought, fucking Kent is a strange place that's here. Let's get this open. Cat plain silver. Nothing to see here. Right, what have we got on the nose coming out of this? We've got a dog barking. Feisty beast. Interesting. Hmm, not much aroma coming out of that at all. Oh, hang on, there's some sweet malt coming from there. And a little, a little touch of hoppy, spicy hops. This is smelling like a British IPA. Let's get it in the glass. Whoa, this doesn't look good. There's a lot of carbonation. Hmm. That has got all the signs of a bad beer. I could be wrong though. Let me see if I can get anything out of the uh, out of the bottle. Well, there's a little bit more malt, a lot more floral notes coming out there now. And some nice sweet fruit. Hmm. I wonder what this is going to taste like. And it looks like it's been filtered because that is clear. There is not a sign of any haze. The fucking carbonation on it is absolutely insanity. Look at that head. Two feet, two and a half finger, foamy white head. Let's investigate. Bottoms up. Mm. There's a ton of biscuit malt on the end of that. There's a slightly sour note on the end of it. And there was a big biscuit malt finish. In the mouth, the carbonation is just so abrasive. Yeah, it really is going for it. And you do get that carbonation in the mouth as well. Is that haze or is that, no, actually, there is a little bit of yeasty residue in the bottom of that. Hello, hello, hello. Which is giving that a haze. So I'm assuming that that is not a glass frosting up. And there's a little bit, I can see little bits of yeast floating in that, but there is so much carbonation in that. Let's, uh, let's go in again. It is a bit devoid on flavour. 
I'm wondering, should I let it settle? Let me give it five minutes to settle and see how it is then. <clears throat> well, I've let it settle for, for five minutes and it's still got a reasonable amount of carbonation in there, but it's not as bad as it was. The head is dissipating somewhat. Um, let's dive in again and see, see what gives. And it's a little bit better, the mouthfeel is a bit smoother. Um, it's quite characterless, I have to say. There's suggestions of hops in there, you know, there's, um, there's a touch of fruit. Um, some floral notes, it, it does taste like they've used uh, British hops in here. I'd love to know what hops they put in there. Overall, that is disappointing. There's a slightly sort of sour note running through it. I'm not sure whether that's come from using dodgy yeast or you know unclean equipment. I could be completely wrong on that, so don't don't sue me, Whitstable Brewery. But this isn't really this isn't really my thing. It's drinkable enough, but it doesn't. No big flavours on there, no big malt, no big hops. It's just very subdued. I know it's 4.1, but that shouldn't make a difference. I've had beers of less ABV with much more flavour. This is a tad disappointing, to be honest. There's not much flavour. What flavour there is, there's a bit of biscuit malt in the finish. You've got some hop character in there, but it's vague. It's vague floral. There's a slightly sour note running through it. Doesn't really do much for me at all, I'm afraid. That's a real shame. So what's the verdict on this? Well, I, I thought, you know, I really want to help out local breweries and stuff. And I saw a Whitstable Bay, or Whitstable Brewery, sorry, brewing stuff and it was available. And I thought, yeah, I'll get some of that. East India Pale Ale. Not really, not really up with that style, but it's just uninspiring and pretty bland, to be honest. There's no big flavours in there. Um, it's it's reasonably drinkable. I mean, it doesn't. It's not nasty. Put it that way. There's just there's just really nothing there that grabs me to be honest it's a very very average it's almost like an old british pale ale that is it's just there's just nothing there that's disappointing i'm going to give that a five out of ten i can't recommend it as much as i would love to and i might give some of their beers their other beers a go they do an oyster stout which is you know quite well known around these parts i think shepherd neem actually do an oyster stout or am I getting confused? I do remember going into a Shepherd Neem pub and they had an oyster stout on draft. I'm not sure whether it was this lot or the Shepherd Neem stuff, but anyway, they do an oyster stout. I'll see if I can get hold of that. I'm not writing off the brewery on the strength of one beer, but that is not really my thing. So yeah, five out of 10, can't recommend it. And remember, I'm drinking this shit, so you don't have to.